Abi şöyle bir mal aldım bu vista. Nobody wanted to talk about it. It still seems that people are not learning from history. No, tell the things going on in Sudan and there was Rwanda, there was Serbia, oh, miserable. And better before it is too late. I'm Margaret Singer. I was born in Frankfurt, Germany, and a long time ago. <laughs> and starting my story. Look at the stem, how it comes down. These are future little bananas. <laughs> and how it starts up there, how these bunch of bananas up there. It's so incredible where they go. If somebody asked me if you had one last meal to eat, I would say bananas and almonds. The first years of our lives, from the time I was born to 1933, were actually very happy times. And then bad things started happening. The children where we used to play with, whom we used to play with started throwing stones at us. And we saw a bearded old man being pulled by his beard and thrown down and, and beaten. And we saw posters depicting Jews, you know, in a very bad way. This was their way of making, making it possible, dehumanizing Jews, making it possible for them to, uh, you know, do their bad deeds, starting the killings. See the little red thing right there? Yeah. Can you see it? It's up in the corner? Yeah. Okay. In this corner right here. It's kind of difficult to see. But yeah. what about in in electric light? I had a letter from my mother in nineteen forty three, I think. Nine no. Nineteen. I had one letter from my mother. And you know it was very sad because she had a nice warm coat her brother had given her, and she sold that coat just for something to eat. It's very sad. And another thing, she tried to get a job at this children's home where my little brother was, and she said, you know, to wash dishes, to clean, anything, just to be with him, and they wouldn't take her in. And another thing that makes me sad when I think about it is that uh, some of the people, when, you know, when the Nazis came into Paris, she, uh, a lot of people went south, uh, went south to Nice, I mean, to, to southern France, and she tried to get on a bicycle, and she couldn't, so she stayed behind. But these things make me sad when I think about them. She was a very sweet woman, so nourishing. But of course, I only later out found out, and her, her, she lived until June 23rd, 1943, and that was her date. My mother, my aunt Anna, and Aunt Becca all died. 
Such martyrs they were, Gethel, Becker, and Anna, and the woman who survived Dachau. But she carried this thing inside her, a weight of ashes, through the years. Let go, her analyst said. Who can stand up against such fearsome ghosts? They are now dead and gone. You are alive. Why carry them around your neck, a baneful burden, oppressing your mind? It's over. They can't come back. Continuous grief is just a waste of life. She thought about it, acknowledged his advice. It would be a relief to change, let go, to simply enjoy the days. But then she must hold tight. She could not forget. Her heart was a shrine for the dead. I want to tell you an experience I had. One day, I was really desperate. I walked looking for a job. I couldn't, didn't know how to go about it. And I looked and walked, and I was so exhausted, and I was totally um, tired. And I came home, and I lay down on my bed, and I thought I was going to die. And my kind of, as if my life were draining away from me. But suddenly, I had this fantastic experience of light flooding through my body. And I felt all my tiredness vanishing, and I felt filled with light and, and joy, actually, bliss. And from then, that time on, I felt that nothing, nothing would actually hurt me or anybody, because I feel that is an experience that all of us have or can have. Uh, to me, that is uh, the presence of God. Yeah. Uh, poetry is also, you know, you go back into your past, and then things come to you, and you write about them. And it's very helpful. It's very releasing. So I helped myself a lot with writing poetry. Poetry, I do it every day. I write every day, almost, because I love it. And then, then sometimes I sit for hours looking for a word. The place is in disarray. <laughs> Dishes are not washed. I should do the laundry. But here I sit looking for a word, thinking about a word, the right word to find. So, so poetry is very important. So I, go, I like to go from poetry to painting. Yeah. And I always like classes, like Matisse. You know, he was a famous artist, but he always uh, took advice from younger teachers. <laughs> My father decided to leave, that we should leave Frankfurt, which was a very good move, because some time later, a little time, not that long later, they uh, rounded up all the Jews of Frankfurt into a hall, and they were all shipped to Auschwitz. So my sister and I, in 1939, left Germany and came to America. When we, we were sick, uh, we were sick um, eight days out of 10, seasick. We were in the cabins, and I said to my sister, oh, wouldn't it be easier to die? And she kind of smiled. And then finally, we saw the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> that was such a marvelous moment. It was wonderful. You cannot believe it. So we cannot take anything for granted. 
One day, my mother took me to um, the butchers on a holiday, the shochet, you know, a Jewish butcher. And I saw how a chicken, how he ch killed a chicken, you know, slit its throat and hung it down, upside down, and the blood was straining. And when I saw that, I said, never again in my life will I eat meat. That is it. Something in me said, I didn't really say it. Something in me said, and I, and I became vegetarian then. And my poor mother, every, every meal we had, everything she cooked, I wouldn't eat. I mean, because it had meat in it. So she didn't think I could survive. So we had often fights about that. My father understood, and he, he, he let me be, but she wouldn't let me be. So we had fights. And then one day, I hurt my hand in the door and kind of fainted. And they carried me on the bed. And my poor mother, did you see Anne Frank? Anne Frank falls down and hurts herself, and they put her on a bed. And her mother comes and says, oh, oh, you know? She, and, and the girl turns her head away. And this is what I had done to my poor mother. I turned my head away when she came, you know, crying over me. That was one of the last times I ever saw her. Then, I'm sure she is in the presence of God. God appreciates beautiful souls like hers. Zero hour, quietude of morning, bells sound from a tower, distant and forlorn. We cling to shadows, walking down the lane in the repetition of a dream. Time is a weed that in old graveyards grows, where the night walks softly, where the grasses sigh, and the weary lie in dark entrails of sleep. Where do the dead go when they leave? their graves, ascend into the air, hover over roofs, create this somber mood, this chilling atmosphere. White faces murmur laments which found no ear and did not end. Last year's leaves still linger on the lawn, turning to dust. The ghosts of ancestors in prayer shawls walk at the sound of chauffeurs.